Here's a quick demonstration where we're going to have a look at sheet metal from solid. So here on screen I've created what I consider to be my design volume, the area I want to encapsulate with a sheet metal box or container of some description. And what I plan to do is to generate some sheet metal features over this shape which leaves the bottom face open for access into that area. Using sheet metal from solid this way gives us some associativity between our design intent, this form, and our final product. So very simplistically I've got to make a few decisions on how I want to construct this. So I'm just going to go straight ahead, run the sheet metal from solid command, and start selecting web faces. And I'm going to start here, and as it generates we can see that the thickness direction assumes outward. If this is a container where my box needs to be within this volume, then I can just flip the thickness. But in this case, I want to use the space inside. So we continue on and I can generate my basic shape. Uh, as each of these web faces are generated, if I look in the parameters and a list, we can see that it generates the bends between them. And in this case, the bends between them are all using the standard, uh, the standard parameters set within preferences. So what happens when I come to pick this side face? It asks me a question here. We have an ambiguous bend edge. I can't join this part on with sheet metal and have it included right the way through. I need to choose or decide where the bends are going to be. And I'm going to select this back edge here. And we can see it's created a gap down the other edges and a bend where I selected. I continue across to the other side and select the final face. Again, it's asking me about ambiguous edges and I'll select the same back edge as I did previously. Now what I'd like to do here to is to increase the internal volume across this bend here. So what I'm going to go and do here is find which bend that is, and in this case it's bend 02, as highlighted, and I'm going to change that bend radius to something much bigger, say 20, and we can see that's adjusted and everything else is maintained. I've got my settings to hide the original. Uh, when I OK the dialog, I'm using the standard thickness, and my design space has been created. So just to finish this off, we want to tidy up some of these edges. I'm going to use the close corner command here and pick these two edges. I've got my treatment set as a U cutout uh, with my corners mitered. My relief properties are defined as corner point with a 0.5. And I can see that it's joined up nicely those edges there. I do the same on the other side. And there's my design space finished and fully encapsulated with a sheet metal feature. Now, one thing I would like to be able to do is to change my design space. So what I'm going to do as an example, I'm going to take uh, this space and I'm going to make it longer. I'm also going to make it a little bit shorter and finish that. And what you'll see is my volume, my space, my box updates accordingly. Let's do another change on this portion of the design here. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And we can see everything updates accordingly. So we've got a fully associative sheet metal part created from a design enclosure or a design space. And just to finish this off, to show the final outcome, we're just going to unbend that and we can see that we've got a fully functioning sheet metal part.